Hello everybody, I'm Castaway Trader and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will try again to count a stock from scratch. And our stock will be natural gas. We have a lot of requests about that and I have been planning to do it for a long time, but it takes time to prepare it in a good way. So just you would enjoy it. So let's get started. Just to remind you, I have a website www.castawaytrader.com and you can also follow me on Twitter, find me as Castaway Trader. Please read that important information. Okay, let's get started. As I explained in my last video, you should always check for the highest available time frame before you start counting a stock. You really want to make sure you understand what is the largest, most important trend is in play currently. And luckily here we have a lot of data to start playing with a monthly chart for natural gas futures. So here we have 17 years of price data for natural gas and basically as I uh, explained last time, the first step for us is to visually evaluate whether we have a trend. And sure we do, <laughs> we have a really nice strong bearish trend in natural gas, lasted for 17 years. So let's see whether we can turn that mess into some framework with a reliable pattern which would help us to understand what we can expect of the natural gas in coming weeks months and days. Just to remind you, so we have discussed already the basic five wave fractal structure and the harmonic Elliott waves in case of a growing market. So now we have a bear market in uh, front of us and I just wanted to show you how basically it should look alike in case price goes down. It's kind of the same, it's just the different direction. We have five waves, motor waves one, three and five, and all waves consist of ABC, and you see elongated two legs of ABC of wave three. This is a distinctive, a hallmark of any five wave structure. And then we have corrective wave four up and final ABC down, which would complete the fifth wave and the whole structure the larger degree wave A. So let's see where we are in terms of that model for natural gas. So let's, so we always start from identifying the first building block, uh, our ABC, and that ABC becomes our wave parenthesis one down. I use parenthesis here because we are working with monthly chart and those are grand waves. So in case we want to get deeper, we would not mess that parenthesis one with smaller waves, ones, waves one of a smaller degree. So here we can see a very deep, but pretty simple correction up. It's very important to note that that correction up could not uh, breach the starting point of the structure. This is at that point the most important uh, low high for us for that structure. If that high was penetrated, was breached by the way to, that would invalidate the whole idea of that move being in impulse down. So once wave two tops, that would become our most important stop, our invalidation point for the whole impulsive structure to the downside. Once we have one, two, we always start to look for two elongated legs down, which would comprise uh, our most important, the most powerful move in uh, the wave three. And here we have them A, B and C, pretty simple. This is our wave three. At that point, we should think about wave four. And what is really important that wave four up should never breach the top of uh, the wave B of three. So here it's pretty simple. It was pretty shallow. And at that point, we should 
make some checks. First, we check the alter alteration rule. In any 5-wave structure, wave 2 and wave 4 should alterate. They should alterate in both its complexity, the shape and depth. So here we have wave parenthesis 2, which was pretty deep. It retraced almost 100% of the wave 1 down, but it was kind of simple, A, B and C, a zigzag. In terms of wave 4, it was pretty shallow. I don't think it actually retraced even 20% of that whole move down of the wave 3. But in contrast, it was kind of complex. So it was A, B and C. It, it took some time. The second test, again, we should double check that wave 4 in its highest point did not bridge the top of the wave B up of 3. And basically we can see that it passed the test as well. Test 3, it's the most important for us because now we are starting to look for a bottom of that huge downside structure which uh, have uh, moved for 17 years downwards. Let's come back to the model. So we came back to that point, to the correction of the wave 4 up and to consider that structure a complete, we need just to get ABC down, preferably where A down would stop somewhere close to the bottom of the wave 3. And what is really also is important here is that both subwaves A and subwave C preferably should have a nice 5 wave down structure because again those subwaves are motive waves they are moving in direction of a trend meaning that they should have a nice 5 wave structure okay to check that it's really difficult to check whether we have five nice wave down on that chart because we are working here with a monthly chart so in that case when you start watching for a bottom you really need to switch to a lower time frame and here we are so we have just switched from a monthly time frame to a daily chart so instead of 18 years on one screen now we have only four years and our starting point here would be the top of parenthesis wave 4. So essentially we zoomed in into that segment and we want to see what kind of structure we could identify here. Okay. And the process is kind of the same again. First ABC down, that would be wave 1, then wave 2 up, then elongated two legs, which would comprise wave 3, A, B, and C, which is our wave 3, and then wave 4 up and because wave 4 up is a corrective wave it should be uh, counted and should be shaped as ABC and this is exactly what we got here and we got wave 4 up here on a lower time frame uh, on a lower degree and from wave 4 as you remember we should get ABC down and it seems like we got those ABC downs even though that C down maybe is not a perfect 5 wave down, but I think it's good enough and it's a, a bit longer, deeper than the first leg down, so I would consider it completed. So we've got 5 waves down. The problem here is that we really need just to get ABC down, which would comprise parenthesis wave 5. So even though that move may look like a perfect 5 wave down, it's only good for a pullback in parenthesis B up. So where we are here? So remember last time we stopped at the top of uh, parenthesis uh, wave 4 up and we wanted to get ABC down and as I mentioned subwaves A and subwaves C should be nice looking five wave moves and we essentially this is what we got is five wave move down but it's only a of five 
but we still need to see a well-pronounced pullback in the wave B up and that wave B up should be shaped as ABC because this is a corrective wave. It moves in uh, opposite direction to the direction of the main trend and the main trend is still down here. Okay, so what should we expect here? So normally we have a very standard pattern for uh, wave B up, you know, for the wave B of five. Normally it tends to stretch very close to the top of the preceding peak in the parenthesis wave four. Not all the time, but we should at least get to 50% retrace of that move down so to check what we got from that low of a of five we here need to dive even deeper and switch uh, from daily chart to two hour chart and in this particular case now we have only two months of data on the chart. So we zoomed in further to see whether we can get any structure and to derive any hints from the structure as to how far that wave B can stretch. And basically what is the best position here to be short or long. And here we use the very same rules because that wave B up is a corrective wave and it consists of ABC, those small A and C would be considered motive waves because they are moving in direction of a wave of a larger degree. Again, wave B, wave B looks up here and it consists of ABC and in, inside of that ABC, Subwaves A and subwave C are motive waves, meaning that those waves should, should consist of five subwaves. So let's come back. And it seems like we got our first move up structured as nice five wave up. Indeed, look, the bottom of wave two was never breached. Then the bottom of wave B of three was never breached. Then we wave C of three made a new high and we clearly see two elongated legs comprising wave three and then we got wave four and here wave two was simple and deep and here wave four alterated it was more complex but shallower and finally we got wave A of five which stole not very higher than top of wave three wave b of five held the law of wave four very important law and we got that crazy c of five making new highs and running all the stops so we got our first five up of the law and this is our wave a so what should we expect here is some corrective movement down in wave B. And the problems, the problem with wave uh, B is that it's very difficult actually to come up with a correct estimation of where it can bottom because waves B are wild cards. So let's see what we got here. So one scenario is that actually we have already bottomed in B. We may identify here A, B, and C. Wave B is a corrective wave. It should be shaped as A, B, C. And we have started a new impulse because remember, we are looking for a larger B up, which would consist of motive wave A up, corrective B down, and motive C up, which would consist of one up. So under that bullish scenario, once we complete or uh, making one more high, wave A, then we should drop in smaller wave B and that law should hold and then we should make another small five up and that would be only wave one of those five waves 
needed to complete wave C up. And once A, B and C, larger C up would be completed, that would be the time to play bearish again. Because remember, to complete those monthly wave fifths down, we had to get A, B, C down. And at that moment, we have left behind the first leg down A and we are working on that parenthesis B up. The second scenario, I call it bearish scenario, may say that we have not bottomed in uh, that B down. So we could say that those five waves down is A, B, and we have only bottomed in smaller wave three, and we are working on some corrective move up, and that may be only A, B, and C up, because here you see wave two up was pretty shallow and it was uh, pretty simple so it may burn time working on that wave four up maybe it's all of four but we what we can say that as long as it's under the top of b of three it still can give us a bearish resolution and if it's indeed wave four up then we would need to get smaller a b c down and finally to complete the b when we can start another five up of c up but in any case those two scenarios fit the main picture we have uh, concluded uh, working with a monthly and daily chart when where we still working on the corrected corrective be up on a larger time frame it's just a question whether that be downs of smaller degree has completed or not so thank you for your attention thank you for watching me so please ask your questions and follow my latest updates on my website castawaytrader.com and follow me on twitter castawaytrader thank you very much and good luck with your trading